Hey guys, it's Justin, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to use this VS Code extension that I wrote called Apex Skeleton Snippets. Uh, I wrote this extension because I found myself copy-pasting a lot of code from various projects, and I decided that these were the most five that I, the top five that I commonly used. And so with that, uh, I'm bringing this to you for absolutely free, so then I can hopefully help you out. Uh, if you enjoyed this kind of content, um, let me know by leaving a comment down, down below and subscribing. Uh, with that, the five classes that uh, I end up writing the most are queuable, controller, a test class, a test class with mock implemented, and a batch class. So let's go ahead and show you how to go and install this. So um, links for everything in the description below. And if you just go ahead and copy the uh, command here and go into VS Code, I know I already have this open, woo is me. Uh, you can do it, Control P, uh, paste this command in, and then it'll show this page. You can go and uh, install it, etc., and see all of this fancy markdown. Um, as for the classes, let's just go ahead and create the first class, which is gonna be Cubable. Uh, note that for all of these classes, I use the um, snippets um, way of grabbing the class name. So if you called this something else, uh, we'll grab the Q, the name of your class. Uh, so the way that you uh, execute this for queuable is you type in queuable, and there's a couple things that you can see here. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a queuable that implements, uh, of course, queuable, but also database that allows callouts. Uh, the reason for this is I end up using queuable a lot to go and control um, and uh, work around the callout limit of 100 callouts within a within Apex. Uh, for for instance, I just wrote an integration for a client involving Shopify meta fields and they wanted to really push the system, both systems to the limit. And so um, they have 100 meta fields uh, inside of Shopify and they have um, to write to potentially all 100, you would need to go and uh, make 100 callouts. And then additionally, you would also want to go and iterate through multiple of, in this case, products. So using Cubable is a good way to go and execute and really control your, your code in an asynchronous manner. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the tabs. So uh, the first tab is the, um, the list type that I end up going and queuing through. So I have this set to account. You can set this to opportunity uh, and then the variable name. So we can call this ops and we have the stack depth as well. Um, stack depth is great for going and tracking things as well as if you're in the sandbox, then you're able to uh, control the stack depth limit. Uh, and then you would go and potentially go and have some sort of um, remaining opportunities here and then um, From here, you would say, I don't know, maybe um, you, you'd remove the ops. So I don't know, remaining ops uh, equals ops dot uh, remove uh, zero or something. Okay, uh, probably this doesn't compile, but nevertheless, uh, then you're gonna say if remaining ops dot size is greater than zero, then uh, you're gonna enqueue um, this class again with um, the ops or remaining ops and then stack depth plus plus. Uh, so you can see here, um, I guess it would be like this and then remaining ops.remove zero, for instance. 
So we can go and iterate over our opportunities and maybe we're going and calling out to a third party system. Maybe we're going and doing some complex data manipulation, but all of that can be done through Cubable. Uh, Cubable is a super powerful class that I've, or interface that I've ended up using quite a lot in the past few um, months as I've really realized and harnessed its its power. So I'd highly recommend learning about this and getting to know how to use it better. Uh, the next one is going to be a controller. Um, I think if you've seen a lot of my videos, again, I, I focus a lot on, on how to use stuff in, in relation to integrations. And so the way that I use controllers and visual force often is not some sort of complex uh, Con complex visual display of any given information, but rather it's just an interface for users to go ahead and execute integrations. Uh, and so if I go and show you how to use this snippet, which is controller, you can see the class controller and we have a standard controller extension. So you can see I have this set up for account uh, because I think that's a default object uh, that most people are familiar with and use in their orgs. But um, let's say we don't want to change this to opportunity, then we can call this op ID, um, change this to opportunity and change this to op. Um, and then we have, of course, the query. You can go and add whatever fields you would want to go and um, iterate over. Or, or use, uh, and then I have some sort of action which you, which you could rename to renamed action. Um, and then we return here. Oftentimes I end up going and redirecting the page to the exact same record depending on circumstances. Uh, so that's why I have the return new page reference of the op ID. Uh, so this is great. Uh, this is a great way to go and interface within your Apex integrations. I know that Lightning Web Components uh, just recently came out with the ability to uh, become actions, and uh, maybe I'll look into harnessing that. But for now, uh, this is tried and true and, and works well. Uh, the next snippet I want to cover is the... Um, batch class. So batch classes are have been around for inside of Apex for a long time and have been traditionally the way to go and iterate through large sets of data. Uh, so if I go ahead and use the snippet batch, you can see that this batch class implements um, batchable, allows callouts, and schedulable. Um, I think I end up using all of these uh, interfaces in every single batch class that I use. So uh, there's obviously these uh, skeleton methods for execute uh, with schedulable, uh, the database start execute for records you iterate over, and then the finish. So all of these are um, what you would want to implement in your interface. And then the tab selects are, uh, for instance, the batch size here. Um, so I have the default is 200, but you could change this to 20 or one, depending on the nature of the batch um, class that you're writing. Uh, the next tab is the query that to get the records. So for instance, I could say select ID from opportunity, uh, and then we'll go ahead and call this um, opportunity and op list. And then we're going to go ahead and do stuff. So uh, super easy way to go and just get a batch class running right away. And um, again, batch class, I think, is staple in most people's uh, repertoire of code they're writing in Apex. The next one I want to cover is the test class. Um, as you know, Test classes or Salesforce in production needs 75% test code coverage. So uh, get used to writing lots of test classes. Uh, so if I go ahead and do test, then I have a test class that has um, pretty basic stuff for uh, is test uh, and a sample test method where you can test code. So pretty simple. Uh, I use this 
pretty frequently, but uh, oftentimes I use the other one more, which is test mock, as again, I'm doing a lot of integrations, so I need to go and have the mock um, implemented. So I think after writing many, many test classes for many, many integrations, I've kind of decided that uh, I prefer this way the most. Uh, maybe uh, your experiences differ, but for me, uh, the way I like to go and have the mock class implemented is some sort of if if else if uh, loop of the endpoints where you're either doing ends with some sort of string or contains some string and then you're setting the body as the JSON of um, your endpoint and then of course you're setting the status code. Uh, what I found is this works great for testing all of your methods and keeps it relatively clean. Uh, additionally, I have this as a private uh, nested class within the test method. And this is just so that then you can better uh, maintain code and you don't have multiple classes for one test class. So this is what I found works best for code that I write. Uh, with that, let's go through the tabs. Um, so you can see the ends with, I don't know, slash endpoint here, um, the body. Now what I end up doing is uh, I end up changing the JSON to Apex uh, code in, a little bit inside the test method so that then I can better harness this. Um, so let me see if I, I deleted it, that's okay. So um, I think the best way is actually just showing you. I, um, uh, how how I end up using this. So we'll just say you have a um, key value JSON, just let's keep it simple. Uh, no, no need to reinvent the wheel here. Okay, so now that I uh, figured out how to use uh, bash again, um, I'm gonna go ahead and unzip this file here. Um, and so you can see two um, you can see two files that you get from the JSON to Apex code uh, from Heroku. And so for instance, if I was gonna do this, I would go and create a file here and I would um, copy and paste it. And then I would go and um, create another file here. And I would copy paste this. Um, here. And so what you can see inside of the um, JSON to Apex is that you get this string inside the test method. And so what I like to do is I actually like to move this outside of the test method into the class uh, and make it a public static string. And this way I can go and reference it inside my code elsewhere. And so then when I'm in the mock class, instead of rewriting the um, super long JSON that uh, tends to be the nature of integrations, I just go and say um, JSON to Apex test dot JSON. And so that way I can go and uh, no, not need to uh, worry about this. Um, not, not complicate and rewrite um, JSON because it's just tedious with the amount of strings and escapes, etc. So obviously then you have whatever necessary um, code that you'd be uh, returning, be it 200, 201, etc. Uh, or you're trying to test errors, then maybe it's uh, 400, 500. Uh, and then of course you have a test method uh, where we have the uh, setting the mock as an HTTP callout.class and then new mock. Um, all pretty standard stuff. And then you could go and write test method here. Or you could go and really get and test your code. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if the content that I'm making here helps you out, uh, let me know by leaving a like and commenting down below. 
Thanks and have a good day.